In this video, we'll be learning how to use Melodyne 5. Hi folks, I'm Mike and I hope you're well. So you've just got hold of Melodyne 5 and you don't really know how to get started with it. Well, fear not because in this video, we'll be covering all of the basics with tools that you'll be using 90% of the time to adjust pitch, timing and amplitude. So let's get started with getting started. So there's actually two ways to use Melodyne within your door. The first way is to simply use it as an insert on a track. Now when the interface appears, you'll need to click the transfer button at the top left and then play your audio so it gets transferred to the Melodyne plugin. Now do remember when you use this method, it should always be the first plugin in your chain of inserts. And also if you make any changes to the underlying audio, like editing parts of it out, you'll need to go through the transfer process again so that's reflected in Melodyne. So the second and I must say my preferred method of implementation is to use the ARA or ARA capabilities of your door. Now with this method Melodyne works a lot more efficiently with your door and any underlying changes you make to your audio like edits are immediately reflected in Melodyne. Now not all doors have ARA capabilities. I've got two on my system which do Cakewalk and Studio One and with both of those you simply select the clip where you want to apply Melodyne and you press Control plus M on your keyboard and then Melodyne is implemented on that track or on that clip. Now some other notable doors which have ARA capabilities are Cubase, Logic and Reason but a notable exception is Pro Tools. With Pro Tools you'll have to use it as an insert on the track. So when you first assign Melodyne to a track, you're going to see something like this, this grid here with these red and yellow squiggles on it. And it's important to understand what all of these squiggles are if you're going to use Melodyne efficiently. So I want to zoom in to the first group of them here in these two bars. I'm going to hold control on my keyboard and then use the scroll wheel on my mouse just to zoom in manually like so. Now if I want to move things up and down, I can just release that control key and then just use the scroll wheel on my mouse to move things up and down as you normally would. And I can move from side to side by holding shift on the keyboard and then using the scroll wheel again to move things from side to side. Okay, so we've got these main areas here that you can see. These are called blobs. Now these are just like the waveforms that you would normally see when you've recorded audio in your DAW, but they've been split up and then they've been assigned to different pitches. So you can see that here, these ones have been assigned to the pitch of G sharp. You can see G sharp is at the side there, at the side of the grid. Uh, this one down here has been assigned to F sharp. You can see that assigned to F sharp there and so on and so forth. So those are the main areas they're called blobs. Now those are the things that we mainly move around to correct the pitch. But the other thing that we can see here are these lines which run between and through the blobs. So the ones that are in the blob right here, that's the main area of pitch for that note, for that word, whatever it is. Now you'll see some of them outside. That's where we've slid in there. So it's a very momentary sound where it slid into that note and then it slid between these two notes. So the line will not always be, the pitch line will not always be perfectly within the blob. It may come from outside of it and then into it, okay? Let's just have a quick listen to this vocal here so you can hear what's happening with these blobs and these lines. Taking my heart and you give it up. You can sit here where she sings heart there where that slide happens. Have a listen again. Taking my heart and you give it up. So it's important. We want those slides and things normally to be in there to keep things sounding natural. So the other thing that we can see here are some blobs, but they've got some horizontal lines. You can see one here and you can see another one over here. Those are non-pitch sounds. So there'll be things like sibilance and sound or t sound or maybe a breath. Now those things don't have pitch associated with them even though they've been assigned to a pitch here depending on what note they come before or after. If you move them around they won't actually change in sound at all. They just retain their sound as it was. So how would we go about adjusting the pitch of some of these notes or these blobs? Well there's one really easy way to do it if you want to be quick and dirty with it and that's to make sure that you have your main tool selected. So I'm going to have the main tools as already selected up here 
here. Now, if, it, if I had another tool selected like so, I could just press F1 on my keyboard to go and select the main tool. So the tools up here are selected with F1, F2, F3, F4, etc., etc. That's a quick way to select all of those tools. So I've got my main tool selected, and I'm going to select this note here. Do you see uh, how these ones are more or less in the center of that G sharp line? But these ones, this blob is a little bit high. That means it's a little bit sharp of the note. Now, if I hover my main tool over that and double click, then I can correct that pitch easily like that. And I could go around and find others like maybe this one over here. It's just ever so slightly off and double click and nothing's happened there. So it doesn't need to be corrected. That one does and you'll see it move there. Okay. So it's important to understand that, or I think it's important to understand that you don't need to correct everything, okay? Not under normal circumstances. I really like to just uh, uh, select and correct the ones which either visually look a long way out or I can definitely hear that they're a long way out. I feel personally, and this is my personal opinion, that if you correct everything, that it can start to sound a little bit unnatural. However, if that's what you want to do, there is a quick way to correct everything. What you can do is select all of, all of your things or your blobs like so, and then you can use the pitch correction macro tool. That's up here. So we'll just click on that. It brings up this interface here. Now we've got a couple of sliders here. We've got the first one, which is the center of the pitch. So you can see that happening. So all of those notes shuffle so that they're right in the center of those uh, notes there. Okay, so we can do that or we can, and we can also use pitch drift. Now this... Um, is sort of making sure there's not too much variation within uh, with the pitch within the blobs. So just take a look at one area. Say this one here, if it's all the way down, you'll see this amount of variation and push it all the way up and there's less variation than there was. Now, this is one that can make things sound really odd if you don't use it in the right places. So I always recommend that after you've made changes with these sliders, that you have a listen to what you've done and make sure you haven't made it sound too uh, inhuman, unhuman, not sure which the word is. Let me know in the comments down below. So I'm actually going to uh, disregard all of that. I'm going to click cancel. But if you do want to make mass changes, that's how you can do it. Now, we are on that main tool, and this main tool is actually very, very clever. It can do just more than double click on notes to correct them. What we can do is drag those notes around. So if I grab a note like so, I can make her voice sound like a siren. <laughs> Okay, so there I am just manually dragging the pitch. Now, if it's not happening like that for you, it could be that um, you have the snap turned on and you may want the snap turned on. We can adjust that by going up to options at the top here, going to the pitch grid. Now, as you can see for me, it's got no snap on. If I changed it, say, chromatic snap like so, then it's going to snap to each of the notes like so, and that's probably quite useful. So there we have the main pitch correction. But as I say, this tool is quite clever. The other thing that we can do is split some of these blobs up using this tool. Now, why would we want to do that? Well, let's take a look at that slide that we were looking at earlier. This slides from an F sharp up to this G sharp here. But when we really look at where it starts, it's not really quite on the F sharp. It's a little bit sharp of F sharp. So we may want to split this note and then correct that initiation of that slide, okay? So I'm just gonna zoom in a little bit more um, in the horizontal direction. So I'm just gonna grab the end of this scroll bar. Can you see the scroll bar tool here? Used to scroll around, just that gray area there. If I, hover, uh, if I click on the end of it and then drag that, I can actually use that to zoom in a little bit further just in that one direction there. So I'd like to do that. That's cool. So what I'm going to do still on my main tool is go to this blob, but I'm just going to go slightly above the blob, just up here, okay? And you can see that the split tool appears there. So I'm going to double click and then that has split that blob in two. Now, of course, that's now detected as an F sharp because it's sliding up from an F sharp. But as I said, it's a little bit sharp of the F sharp. So I'm just going to double click on that now to correct that. So it's sliding exactly from that F sharp up to the G sharp. Let's have a listen to that. Taking my heart and you give it up. Now, there's only a slight difference in sound. And as I say, you may or may not be able to hear that pitch difference. But 
as I also say, I always audition those things after I've done them just to make sure I haven't made things sound a little bit weird because you can make things sound a little bit weird with Melodyne at times. So that's another thing that we can do is split blobs up and then adjust the pitch of those different parts that we've then created. Now, the other cool thing that we can do with this main tool is adjust some of the timing. So if we hover onto the end of a blob, we will see the timing tool appear there. So what I'm going to do here is take this word here now this is the word give we'll just have a listen to that Taking my heart and you give it up and what i'm going to do is just drag the end of that give note out there i'm just going to make it a bit longer so that she holds the word and the note for a little bit longer let's have a listen Taking my heart and you give it up so we've musically started to change things there and that can be very useful indeed but you may not want to use it for that reason it may be that you want to adjust the timing because the singer wasn't quite right with their timing and that can often happen and sometimes it could just be one word in a whole otherwise perfect uh, section and it's just slightly out of time and you can just quickly adjust it without them having to do the take again and spoil what is otherwise a great take so that's the other thing that you can do with this main tool so altogether there's pitch correction as we did like so double clicking on things there is the ability to split things which we would do like so double click above and then there are the timing tools so that we can adjust the timing uh, by dragging on the ends of notes so next we're going to take a closer look at what we can do with pitch so let's take a look at what else we can do with pitch by using the pitch tools. Now I'm on the main tool at the moment here, but if I press F2 on my keyboard, it'll select the pitch tool here, or I could have clicked here with my mouse. Now there's other tools underneath here. If we do a long press with the mouse, we can see apart from the main pitch tool, there is this modulation tool and then also the pitch drift tool as well. Now if you want to get to those with keyboard shortcuts, it's done easily again with the F2. So we press F2 for the main pitch tool and then we press Press F2 twice quickly to get to the modulation tool. And then we press F2 uh, three times quickly, one, two, three, to get to the pitch drift tool. Okay, so that's how you can use those keyboard shortcuts. So I'm going to choose the main tool first of all. And we can see that there's these yellow lines which now run through here. Now, these are the transitions between the different notes that we can see here. And we can adjust those transitions. If I just turn the tool off for a moment, go back to the main tool, we'll look at this one here. You can see that the pitch here, it does some variation but uh, in this note here and then when we go up to this note right at the very beginning it goes just a little bit sharp at the beginning of that note so we can actually adjust that using this tool so again I'll press F2 on the keyboard and what I'm going to do is go to the beginning of the transition so think of these these lines here as transitions I'll go to the beginning of the transition uh, hold my left left mouse button down and then drag up and down and I can adjust that pitch you can see it changing within that second note there okay so I can just bring that down down, so it looks a little bit more natural it's not going quite so sharp and I've made my adjustment let's have a listen to it quickly Taking my heart and you give it up. And that sounds absolutely fine okay so the second tool we can use uh, by pressing F2 twice quickly one two is the modulation tool so modulation is often going to be intentional changes in pitch or maybe unintentional um, within a note like so so it could be vibrato um, which is causing modulation or it could be an accident by the singer who knows but we can adjust that modulation again by selecting this tool just uh, dragging over that note and moving our mouse up and down and I can kind of smooth things out as you can see there so I can actually flatten it off completely like that let's have a listen Taking my heart and you give it up okay now for me when you do that when you flatten it off it really starts to sound unnatural i used to i like to leave a little bit of variation in there like so okay so that's one way of adjusting those uh, pitch lines the other way is with the pitch drift tool so i'm going to press f2 three times quickly one two three to get to the pitch drift tool now I go between these tools because I'm never quite sure, to be honest with you, which one to use. I think the idea is, is that pitch modulation are those natural and often intentional variations in pitch, and pitch drift is where the singer kind of falls off of the note unintentionally. That's the way it's explained, but I, as I say, you may go between the tools and experiment with them to find out which one's for you. So I've got um, the pitch drift tool selected now. I'll just hover over this Ready? note here. And you can see that it's making changes there to that 
pitch line. So you'll have to experiment with that yourself to find out which one of those is for you. So I have a question for you. Are you finding this video helpful? If you are, then go ahead and help me out by hitting the like button. Do it right away so that you don't forget. Also, if you do like this kind of content, make sure you subscribe and ring the bell on YouTube so that you're notified about my future videos. Now, let's get back to this video. So we've adjusted pitch and we've adjusted timing. The other thing that we may want to adjust is amplitude or volume on particular notes. So we can do that by selecting the amplitude tool. I'll press F4 on my keyboard to do that. Now that's been selected at the top, as you can see. Now you may notice that there's some other selections below that. We can see the little arrow there. If we long press on that, then we can also see there's a fade tool and a sibilance balance tool. Now if you can't see those, that probably means that you have the essential version of uh, Melodyne and we need to have the assistant version and above to see those two tools but if you are on the essential version you can't see those please do stick around because we've still got some other things to cover for you guys as well so just like the other tools if we just press F4 momentarily or just once it uh, selects the main tool if we press it twice quickly then we bring up the fade tool and then if we press it three times quickly then we bring it one, one two three we bring up the sibilance balance tool so I'll just press it once for the main amplitude tool and and then if we go to one of the notes and drag up and down on it, then we can change the volume of it like so. So we'll make that one really quiet, which is going to sound really silly, but we'll do it anyway because um, it's going to affect something which I'm going to show you later. I'll make this one really loud. Okay, so if we listen to that, as I say, it's going to sound pretty unnatural. Taking my heart and you give it so you can hear that those notes are quite loud and quite quiet there. I've changed the amplitude. Obviously, you're often going to use it a little bit more subtly than I have done there. Now, the other thing that we can do is fade in and out of notes if we have the assistant version above. So I'll press F4 twice quickly to bring up the fade tool. And then we just have to drag, say, over the beginning of a note here to create a fade in. That can be handy if you've got uh, too sharp an attack on a note, for example. And we can also do some fade out. So I'll just grab the end of a note there and fade that out. So that's the fade tool. Could come in handy, as I say. And then the other thing we have is the sibilance, bal the sibilance balance tool. So I'll press F4 three times. And again, this has to be in the assistant version and above. And then we can actually just change um, the relationship between the sibilance and the note. So for example, here, I'll just drag over this uh, sibilance, which is, I think, a breath at the beginning of the word heart, or that heart sound. And if I drag around, we can see that's moving up and down. Now, it isn't changing the balance between that, but in other cases, it will. So for over here for this breath, you'll see that it's changing the balance. So here, I'm making the sibilance quiet and the note itself is louder. If I drag up, the sibilance is loud and then the note is quiet or non-existent. That will sound really loud, odd. Let's have a listen. It's got rid of you, the word you. Or t Sorry. It's got rid of the word take there. So that controls the balance between the two. Or you can just, as I say, just adjust uh, the volume of the sibilance there. Very handy indeed, and you could use that instead of a DSing tool if you like, and you may find it a little bit more effective. Now, the other thing that we can do in terms of volume is grab whole areas like so. So we grab a bunch of notes here. And then we can use this tool up here. This is the note leveling macro. So if we click on that, it brings up this interface. We've got two sliders which really speak for themselves. Make quiet notes louder or make loud notes quieter. You can see them in action. If I adjust this slider, then those really quiet notes have become a bit louder. And then if I adjust this slider, the outstanding loud notes have become quieter. Now, this is not something that I would recommend you always use to extremes to get everything in perfect balance because obviously um, the singer may definitely want some parts of their vocal piece to be a little bit louder than others. But it can really help just as a quick tool just to level things out and make things a little bit more even, okay? A very helpful tool in actual fact. So if you've got any questions at all, please do ask in the comments down below. Thank you so much for joining me today in this video. I hope you found it helpful. Now, if you want to support this channel, do check out my Patreon link in the description down below. For as little as $1 per month, you can help me help you by making more videos like this. And I'll see you in the next video. <laughs>